I still have quite a few items in my wardrobe that were purchased the previous season that never made it to the tailor. Hmm. So much for best practices. <laughs> friends and welcome to Born to be Zesty. If you're new here, my name is Tori and on my YouTube channel I focus on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle where I also share my passions for food, fitness, and home decor. So if any of those topics interest you, I hope that you'll stick around. Today we're talking about preparing your fabulous spring wardrobe. In today's video, I'll be sharing the tips and best practices that I've utilized over the years to prepare my wardrobe for the upcoming season. Of course, right now we're preparing for spring, so sure. let's get into it. So as I do at the beginning of every season, I start by decluttering my existing wardrobe. In this process, I get rid of the things that are damaged or stained beyond repair, things that no longer fit my body, as well as things that no longer align with my current style aesthetic. Once I've removed those items from my wardrobe, I separate them into two distinct categories, things that can be donated and things that need to be discarded. In the second step, I set aside things that need to go to the tailor for alterations. If any of you guys are like me, I still have quite a few items in my wardrobe that were purchased the previous season that never made it to the tailor. Hmm. So much for best practices. <laughs> or things that I've picked up along the way preparing for the spring season that need to go to the tailor for alterations. You want your garments to fit your body. In order to have an elevated style, your garments need to fit you properly. So get that waist cinched in, have the hems set at lengths that are proper for your body. This goes for pants, skirts, and dresses. Alter shoulders and sleeve lengths on jackets. Whatever you need to do to make sure that the garment best fits your body and enhances your silhouette, Get that taken care of so that you can have those garments ready to wear. You want to rock the items that you purchased. The next step is always to organize. And each of us has our own way, method of organizing that works for us. But definitely find a system that works for you so that you can see what you have and have access to those items for styling. When you don't know what you have, you end up either repeat buying items that are already existing in your wardrobe, or you don't wear an item that you're so excited about and so thrilled to have because you don't feel like you have the appropriate piece to pair with it. And that piece could be tucked away in a drawer somewhere, in a storage bin, in a closet somewhere, or hanging under something and you can't see it. So whatever you need to do, Find an organization system that works for you so that you can see all of your items, see your accessories so that they're easily accessible to you when you're ready to start styling outfits. I like to pull my items for each season out and then I go through them all. I organize them <clears throat> by the type of garment, the color, and the sleeve length. For me, organizing things by color not only allows me to see just what I have, it also allows me to see if like maybe I've got a white long sleeve shirt, but I really need a short sleeve shirt. A, I can check, put that onto my list. Or I can see that, you know what, I really love green and I've been wanting to incorporate more green into my wardrobe. When I have things organized by color, I can see, hey, you know what, I don't really have green or I don't have blue or whatever those omissions are. Organizing things allows you to see all that you have available to you and it also provides a visual overview for the gaps in your wardrobe. This next step is where things start to get fun. Create a mood board that showcases your current style aesthetic, the things that you're excited about wearing, types of looks that you want to wear for the upcoming season, but create a visual inspiration board. This really helps you to kind of hone in on how you want to present yourself for the upcoming season, the types of looks that you're going for, and really helps you to kind of declutter your mind when it comes to 
preparing a signature style and a curated wardrobe. Brands are pushing out new fashions all the time. It is so easy to get wrapped up and consumed by the constant flow of newness coming in that you kind of lose sight of where you are going. Trust me, I know it, it happens to me all the time. Having that mood board really helps you to focus, helps you to stay on track, not to get distracted by the newness of things that are constantly being pushed out by brands that catch your eye and you think that they're smashing or they're stunning and they're fantastic, but they don't necessarily align with your style aesthetic. It really provides that visual impact to bring you back into focus on where you're going with your personal style. I like to create digital mood boards on either Canva or Pinterest, but you can definitely go the old fashioned way with magazines and a whiteboard. I think That's a style and fashion mood board is an essential component, at least in my mind, as I prepare my wardrobe for the upcoming spring season. This step helps me to be intentional about my looks, provide style inspiration, honing in on my current style, and prepare and shop with intention. Next, I create looks with the pieces in my existing wardrobe. And when creating these looks, I highly recommend that you actually go through the process of trying things on, creating the entire look, accessories and all, to ensure that what you see in your head actually works and translates in real life application. Because trust me when I tell you, oftentimes it does not. I have definitely been there a time or 10. And it's really important to know that before you count on that ensemble as an outfit. And once you have created looks that work, I highly highly, highly recommend taking pictures of them. Trust me, you've put together this look, it's fantastic, you love <laughs> in it. In two days or less, for me, you are 100% going to forget about the outfit that you created in your head, and now out the door goes this phenomenal look. Take pictures of them, have them stored in your phone, load them up on your computer, whatever you need to do to ensure that you've got those looks tagged and archived for future use. Going through the process of trying on looks and creating outfits, taking pictures of them will also help you to identify gaps in your wardrobe, which will take you to the next step, which is creating a shopping list. When you're going through the process of trying on things, as you're putting looks together, then that's when you have that aha moment of, ah, oh, this would be so good with a bright yellow top, or all oh, this would be great if I had, you know, a sheer black layering piece. So when you go through this process and then you realize that, oh, I would really love to have an XYZ for this particular look, grab your phone immediately, go to notes, create categories, and put the item in notes in your phone so that you can have that on hand with you when you're shopping. Again, trust me when I tell you, you're never going to remember all of the things that you're like, oh, I really need to have. You'll remember the wants, but not the needs. <laughs> and the needs are where we need to fill the gaps First. So when I create my shopping list, I first work through what I consider to be essential for that season. It allows me to identify where I have those specific what? needs. And I feel like categorizing them really helps me to break them down into very focused shopping lists. And having those lists handy with me on my phone when I'm out shopping ensures that I actually purchase what I need and helps me to cut down on impulse buys. How many times have you gone out and you've done a huge shopping spree only to come home and a week or two later, when you go to put on that dress or that outfit, you go, oh, I still need a brown shoe. Well, if you had that list handy with you while you were out shopping, you would have been looking for a brown shoe instead of buying another black shoe that you absolutely did not need. So here are a few examples of what I consider to be spring essentials. Layering tees and tanks. This is where your classic white t-shirts, your striped boat neck shirts, your tank tops, all of those things come into play. 
also blazers in seasonally appropriate fabrics like your cottons, your linens, and depending on the climate where you live, you know, many of those tweed jackets are also perfect for spring. Lightweight pants and linens and cotton fabrications, cropped denim in your cropped pants. These are all the types of things that we traditionally wear in spring, and many of these things can then flow over into summer. In the category of denim, you have white denim, medium to light wash denim, and we always need a pair of classic dark wash denim for those more elevated denim looks. A trench coat. A trench coat is a timeless spring essential. You definitely got to have a trench coat. This is something that you can use to easily elevate any look. Trench coats are an absolute spring essential. Don't forget about your fashion sneakers or just a clean, classic, low profile white sneaker that goes with everything in your spring wardrobe. This is also a great time to consider colors or your color palette. Your navies, your whites, your tans. Are you someone who really likes color? Do you put more focus on brights or pastel hues. These are the details that as you're making your shopping list and you put those items in categories, for example, I will say in my blazer category, I need a beige or a cream linen blazer. I'm very, very specific so that I know exactly what I'm looking for when I'm out shopping. You wanna be as specific as possible so that you can really narrow down and frame your shopping experience so that you can truly shop with intention. I generally focus on neutrals that can easily be paired with brights and pastel hues. But trust me when I tell you that making a categorized shopping list that you can keep with you <laughs> when you're shopping will change the game in terms of ensuring that you have the essentials for styling your best looks and creating a phenomenal wardrobe for the upcoming season. And I know I skipped over them, but don't forget your sandals and your mules and all of the good things. Make a complete list, put them in categories, be very detailed and very specific. Now let's talk about our favorite part, of course, the shopping. So when I start my shopping for the upcoming season, I like to start online. This, I feel like, is kind of a time saver. Although I do consider shopping a sport, one of my favorite sports, this gives me an idea of what's available, what's available where, and allows me to create a very targeted shopping list. So during this time, as I'm sure most of you do, I have a few brands that are my go-tos for particular items. For example, I love Target's like Racerback tank tops, or Zara's Supima Cotton tees and tanks, as well as their denim. But even even to, for my go-to brands, I make a list. I'm going to go to Target and I'm going to buy three white tanks. I also make a list of any upcoming trips or events already on my calendar for the upcoming season. Perhaps I need some resort wear for a vacation or a statement dress for a specialty occasion like my upcoming birthday. For these events, you may need something a little extra, something that is beyond an essential, but you still want to plan for it so that you have all the other essential that you need to complete the look and to make a great outfit. So here's where I also like to visit new brands, or should I say brands that are new to me, brands. that I've been interested in, brands that I've been wanting to try or wanting to shop and have yet to do so. A few brands that have been on my radar that are definitely in my shopping list for the upcoming season are Dish, Ajay, Massimo Duty, Toss, and other stories, Hanifa and Andrea Iyama, who does amazing resort wear. From the brands that I just listed, I will definitely leave links in the description box for some of the items that I've got my eye on, things that I am currently coveting, and things that I hope to add to my wardrobe for the spring season. Now, while we're going through all of our essentials and creating our shopping list, doing our edits, don't forget to do an accessory edit. Maybe you need a nice spring hat or a fitted cap or a beautiful scarf. Maybe you're looking to add more silver or more gold to your accessory lineup. This is why I said 
do the looks from head to toe, accessories and all. Doing so will again make it so very clear to you the things that you are missing and the things that you want to incorporate into your wardrobe to create fabulous looks. Maybe you've been wanting to incorporate more statement earrings or statement necklaces into your accessory lineup, but don't skimp on the accessories and on the accessory edit. Remove those things that no longer align with your style aesthetic and add to the list the things that you want to bring into your wardrobe. Accessories truly make the look. They are a necessity. Especially as the weather warms up, we're doing less layering, we're showing more skin. Accessories work to tie the look together, add the polish, and are really your must-have finishers when creating an elevated, put together, and styled ensemble. So let me know if you have a wardrobe prep process and a best practice that works for you that you recommend that I share with the sister friends. Let me know which tips and tricks you'll be adding to your wardrobe prep process, as well as any brands that you recommend. You guys may pass on something to me where I feel like I need to pull together a big haul to share with the sister friends. We wanna elevate, we wanna keep growing and glowing. So share your brand recommendations and drop a comment if you you think that there's something that I would absolutely love that I need to try. I can't wait to see what you all share. If you're looking for daily style inspiration, be sure to check me out on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. That's where all of my daily style inspo goes up, and that way you never miss a look. If you're enjoying the video thus far, be sure to stop and give it a big thumbs up. This lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the content and that they should push my videos out to more viewers, which will hopefully bring more subscribers to my growing channel. For those of you who have already subscribed to the channel. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your support more than you can possibly know. Go ahead and click the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that you found some tips and tricks that are helpful to you in curating your spring wardrobe. Thank you so much for spending a portion of your day with me. I greatly appreciate it. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are walking in gratitude and that you are dreaming big and living even bigger. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!